Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to deal with uh, the Lagrange error term. Uh, in particular, I'm going to show you how to find uh, the maximum error, so find an, a Lagrange error bound, uh, when you use an nth degree Taylor polynomial to estimate a particular function. Uh, so our example, in fact, is going to be uh, using the fourth degree uh, Taylor polynomial centered at x equals 1 for ln of x, which is this here. We're going to estimate ln of x. So we're, in place of ln of x, we're going to use this polynomial, which represents ln of x uh, through the Taylor uh, polynomial of degree 4, centered at 1. Um, and for x is in here, we're going to find what the biggest error we could get would be uh, when we use this in place of the actual function. Now, uh, to start, um, let's uh, recall that uh, the Taylor polynomial uh, expansion for any function f of x would look like this. So if the center is a, then it start with f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a, right? And then plus f double prime of a over 2 factorial times uh, x minus a uh, to the second. And if we skip on to the nth term, it will be like plus dot 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 plus uh, f n of a over n factorial times x minus a to the n. And then plus uh, the Lagrange error term, which is plus uh, rn of x. So this is going to tell us like the error we get and um, uh, using the nth degree Taylor. So this, this is what, what's going to allow us to come up with an error bound when we use this nth degree Taylor as opposed to like the infinite polynomial, right? Okay, 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 cool. So it turns out that uh, rn of x um, is equal to, it's equal to fn plus 1 of c over n plus 1 factorial times uh, x minus a to the n plus 1. And this is example one, so I'll have a couple of additional examples, practical examples, but example zero in my video series, uh, and all of them, is like a proof and the motivation. So if there's enough views for this video and the other examples, then I'll make an example zero explaining why this has got to be so. Yeah? Okay, cool. Why R of, R of X, the Lagrange error term, is a good, uh, a way to find a good bound for the error in using the nth degree Taylor, yeah? Okay, 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 cool. Now, um, if you have this handy, uh, cool, like, but you don't have to find the actual, like, nth degree Taylor uh, at a particular center in order for you to work with uh, Rn of x and to find a bound. But you do need the fifth uh, derivative for whatever function you're working with. So, uh, for our function ln of x, since the first derivative, f prime, of x is equal to 1 over x, which is x to the negative 1. Uh, without uh, too much work, you can find that the fifth derivative is going to be, uh, it's going to be 24 x to the negative uh, 5. And so that I'm saying uh, is like f5 uh, of x, the fifth derivative for our function f of x is tw 24, which is 4 factorial times uh, x to the negative fifth, and so 4 factorial over x to the fifth, yeah? Okay, so that means that in this case, rn of x is going to equal um, this here, f n plus 1 is uh, uh, this here, right? Evaluated at c, and important to pay attention, even though it says rn, here is n plus 1, n plus 1, n plus 1, right? So since R, uh, R4 is what we're using here, we're going to get a bunch of 5s on the right side, is what I'm saying. So um, this evaluated at C is going to be that guy, right? Okay, and that's going to be 4 factorial over uh, C to the 5th, right? And then, of course, we have uh, this is divided by n plus uh, 1 factorial, so that means it's divided by 5 factorial, right? Okay, and then of course we have uh, x minus a, a is 1, so x minus 1, our center, uh, to the fifth power, right? And what we need to do is find the biggest that this could be for x is in here. And one thing I did not write, uh, and that's important to note, is that c, right, the c here, which you're probably wondering about, is in the open interval a to x, where a is a center, and x is like the x's you're given, right? Okay, so uh, for us, c is then going to have to be, c is going to have to be, um, 
c is going to have to be n, uh, the open interval, 1 half, uh, comma, uh, 3 halves. It's going to be in, the, in here, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, and so how do we find the biggest this could be, uh, given that c has to be in here, and x has to be in the closed interval there, and c again in the open interval, uh, 1 half to 3 halves. Okay, uh, here, I go r4 of x, in this case, uh, has to be strictly less than, strictly less than, 4 factorial, by the way, I could do a little bit of simplifying here, which is, I have 4 factorial here, and that's why I wanted to write 24 as 4 factorial, and 5 factorial here, so 5 in the denominator survives. But yeah, I'm going to say um, r4 of x is strictly less than 1 over 5, and this 5 is that black 5 right there, and then I'm going to pick c uh, to be uh, the greatest lower bound of this, and that's why I have strictly less than. And the greatest lower bound of this is 1 half. So I have 1 half c to the fifth. And the reason why I picked the greatest lower bound instead of uh, the least upper bound of the set is because um, since I have c to the fifth in the denominator, this part is going to be biggest if I pick the smallest possible c, right? Um, and of course, like uh, c is in, in the open interval, so uh, this is uh, the greatest uh, lower, sorry, the greatest lower bound of this set, and that's why, again, I use strictly less than. Uh, and then I have like uh, x minus 1 to the fifth. And I'm going to say that this is less or equal to, and I'll tell you why in a second. Well, I've got uh, 1 over, um, I've fixed um, this, this part already. So 1 over um, 5, and then 1 half to the 5th power, right? Okay, now the only choice there is to make is for x. And x is in here, including the endpoints 1 half and 3 halves. And x minus 1 to the 5th will be biggest if I pick... Uh, the number on the farthest right in here, and that's 3 half, right? Um, yeah, so our task again to maximize this whole thing is to maximize this part, which is by picking the smallest c we could pick, uh, and then to maximize this part, which happens if we pick the biggest x we have available to us. And so the biggest x available is 3 halves, so I go 3 halves, that's x minus 1, uh, that's a big one. 3 halves minus 1 uh, to the fifth, right? But wait, 3 halves minus 1 is just 1 half, so I just have 1 half to the fifth here. Okay, cool. 1 half to the fifth. Got it. Now look here. This is what I'm going to do. Uh, how convenient. Boom, boom. Uh, so we see that r4 uh, of x um, is lesser or equal to... Uh, lesser or equal to one-fifth. And I guess uh, before I uh, conclude, I should tidy up why this is lesser or equal to. Well, x is in here, right? And so when x is 3 over 2, that justifies the equal to part. For any other x, it's going to be less than, and therefore less than or equal to. Yeah? All right, cool. I hope you understood this. And otherwise, uh, leave me questions.